Born in Louisiana in 1976, Reese Witherspoon has become one of the most glamorous and highly paid actresses in Hollywood. Despite the Southern Belle's mega fame, her family still comes first. Incredibly ambitious, having started out in showbiz at such a young age, she's managed to stay grounded. Honey, I've been in this business since I was 12. <laughs> Before they had labor laws and stuff for children not working in this business. I was down in Tennessee working on jobs and they weren't any social workers or nothing. A former child model and school cheerleader, she's strikingly beautiful. The perfect blonde, peachy, all-American girl next door. But don't let her innocent appeal deceive you. In Pleasantville, she proved she's got attitude and can play the rule-breaking bad girl. Well, she has to be very dangerous. She has to turn that town on its ear. She's the catalyst. That, that sends that place into upheaval. And Reese is just the bravest actress. She's just so committed. When she makes a choice, she just has the guts to go for it. And she's so phenomenally talented. At Reese's 21st birthday party, romance blossomed when she met actor Ryan Philippe. They quickly became Tinseltown's it couple and were married shortly after the release of Cruel Intentions, in which they co-starred. It was a wonderful experience, you know, uh, being able to sort of be passionate about the same project at the same time, and I think it really ultimately helped both of our characters. Did it disturb you at all seeing him play someone so manipulative and... Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, there were days where I didn't want to see him kiss another girl. Um, but ultimately, I think he's so amazing in this movie, and I would never, you know, uh, let my jealousy get in the way of him playing a wonderful part. The saucy Cruel Intentions was a hit, but it was starring in Legally Blonde as the lovable, bright and bubbly sorority queen come law student that really shot Reese to superstar status. People in their early 20s have moments like that um, where everything that you thought your life was going to be suddenly turns on its head and suddenly you're having to uh, rethink the whole path of your future. And I think that's what Elle does and in sort of this strange way she decides she's still going to be motivated by this relationship and she's still going to go out there and try and get into law school all to maintain this relationship that's pretty much gone. Very focused on her craft, Reese even attended law school to prepare for the role which gave her a new respect for the students. Um, for this movie I went down to Loyola down in, in LA and I sat in on a couple of classes and it was not easy. <laughs> it was really challenging. The huge success of Legally Blonde proved Reese could carry a film as the comic lead. And she admits working with some of the best in the business, like comedy veteran Jennifer Coolidge, really helped hone her skills. It's been great for me because they cast so many great comedic actors in this movie, and it's really great to just sort of be quiet and listen to people just say their lines and how they interpret the lines, and from Jennifer Coolidge to Selma Blair to Jessica Caulfield to Meredith Scott Lynn, and it's been really just everybody has such an interesting way of interpreting things. And I think that it just makes my job a lot easier. While at first glance, Legally Blonde is a ditzy, light-hearted comedy, Reese recognized and connected with the film's meaningful underlying themes. A female camaraderie is one of the most important themes of this movie, is really about finding um, your strength as a woman and um, really finding the friends and enemies that you do as a woman. You know, I think all women know what it's like to be jealous of another woman or to be resentful of their relationship, but to be able to surpass that and um, find a friendship within those confines, I think that's, that's a really great message, I think. And I like the fact that Selma and I ultimately end up being good friends and it has nothing to do with guys and it has nothing to do with competition. It's just, you know, about women understanding each other. Reese's rapid rise continued and she drew on her Southern Belle roots in Sweet Home Alabama, which raked in more than $100 million at the box office and Legally Blonde 2 was also a hit. Then came her Oscar-winning performance as June Carter in the Johnny Cash biopic Walk the Line in which she courageously overcame stage fright and proved she could sing. Well, we rehearsed for six months. Um, we had vocal coaches and uh, we learned to play musical instruments, Joaquin and myself, and then we rehearsed with bands and learned how to play, you know, and just basically become musicians. And to think she was so scared, she desperately tried to get out of the part, telling her manager to hire Leanne Rhymes. Next, Reese played a spirit, haunting Mark Ruffalo in Just Like Heaven. It's interesting the, the dynamic in this film where I'm talking to Mark Ruffalo and 
no one else can hear me and he has to relay all the information that I give him. So it's been really a confusing dynamic. And initially, in the beginning, we were completely confused about what I was supposed to say and how he was supposed to relate it and whether or not people could sense me. And um, But now we have it down in such a rhythm that we can just say pages and pages of dialogue and he just repeats them verbatim how I say them. So really, it's because he cheats and makes me learn all the lines and he just says them after me. So he kind of got off in this movie. Uh, Scott free, but that's all right. I have to really sort of remember what she's doing in a scene or, or imbue like my imagination or with her not being there. And, and one thing that was really works really well is we've been putting an earwig in my ear and she'll be off somewhere and she'll just say the lines and I'll be you know, I kind of know where her eye line is, and after a while, I know I know her height, and I know, you know, in proximity where she is. So I kind of can play to her a little bit without her being there. And it's when she has, when I have the earwig on, it's amazing because I'll be in a scene with six other people, and we'll really be responding to her. And I can see them. I mean, it must look totally. It just must look insane, you know. And it's really fun because I get all the nuances of her not being there. And, and her actually being there without her being there. Reese admits she actually believes in the paranormal. I definitely think people have, you know, encounters with spirits and, and people who they love that really, you know, are still around them um, even after they pass on and things. I definitely believe in all that stuff. I watch that John Edwards show, I love it. And I read all those Sylvia Brown books and, um, there's something really reassuring about it, you know, that, that, that we're not here for no reason, that, you know, maybe we constantly influence each other's lives even when we go on. In 2007, the fairy tale was over and the golden couple Reese and Ryan divorced in one of Hollywood's most publicised splits. She handled the breakup with grace and dignity, focusing on their two children, Ava and Deacon, while also throwing herself into work. Her next film rendition gave her the chance to break down some stereotypical misconceptions. I also was very interested in playing Isabella because I had a lot of, you know, curiosity and interest in what it must be like to be living as part of a Muslim family in America. Because obviously, you know, there's a lot of ideas we have about religion and certain religions and a lot of fear that has been propagated and. I, I was interested in sort of dispelling some of that fear and also bringing a, a human face to it, a real story of a, a woman who is dealing with the complications of her husband's religion in this country. After some serious drama, she returned to comedy with Four Christmases. So which genre does she prefer? I enjoy both very much, so I feel very lucky that I get to go back and forth. In Four Christmases, Reese teamed up with one of Hollywood's favorite funny men, Vince Vaughn. Well, first of all, Vince Vaughn, I just think he's so funny and I love all his movies, um, especially Wedding Crashers and The Breakup. And I, uh, I got the opportunity to read the script and I was like, and they said he was interested, so we, we met and we decided to do the movie together, which is nice, you know, to have a partner. Reese takes her work very seriously and, uh, you know, she uh, works very hard at, at her part and, and definitely, um, you know, her work matters to her, so she, she's very focused uh, uh, on what she uh, does performance-wise. And she was really easy to play off of, uh, even in the little bit that we improvised and did stuff. I think she had such an understanding for her character that she was very comfortable, you know, playing around the moment. And, and we were changing stuff as we, as we went, as, as it is usually on these comedies, and she was m more than able to sort of uh, keep up with that and, and add to that and, and uh, do a nice job. Reese is dazzling. She's really dazzling because she, on one hand, has this um, wonderful brain that understands business and understood how to produce the movie, and yet, at the same time, she's, she's an actor, you know, to the very core of her being, so she's in the scene completely committed with you. And the fact that she can wear those two hats and is a mom, you know, all at the same time, keeping her family going, and I really related to her that way. I've been a single mom in this business with two children, uh, you know, that uh, like she has and, and we talk sometimes about what that's all like. Enjoying production so much, 
Reese now owns her own production company called Type A Films, named after the nickname her mum gave her as a child. A famous face and equally famous voice, Reese featured in Monsters vs Aliens, an experience she really enjoyed. You get to use your imagination in a way you can't always do because you're restricted by your own physicality and you're not self-conscious because nobody's actually really seeing you, so you get to be as silly and stupid as you want to be. You're recording these things in a sound booth, which I call actor in a box, is like, so weird. They're like, okay, well now you're gonna strap a yellow taxi to your right foot. Then you're gonna strap a blue car to your left foot, and you're gonna skate like you're. I'm like, okay, am I roller skating? Am I rollerblading? What am I doing? So many achievements, but there's still plenty more she wants to do. Well, you know what? It's hard to travel because I have small children, so I, I think I'm probably putting a lot of that off until I have more time and I feel good that they are gonna be happy and healthy and safe. So, I'm, I'm looking forward to traveling. To really, I don't know. I want to go. I want to go back to India. I've only been once for two days, and I'd really like to go to Japan. I've never been there, and all sorts of places. And no doubt she'll get there. Extremely ambitious and talented, the gorgeous and focused Reese Witherspoon has had to deal with many public highs and lows, but has come out the other side shining brighter than ever, proving she's a force to be reckoned with and a true Hollywood star. Stay tuned to Star Picks for all of the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcast in glorious high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. It's all together better on screen and at mnc.tv.